Barrett's esophagus is a precancerous change that happens at the lower end of your foot pipe or gullet. And this is as a result of chronic or long-term exposure of the acid which comes up into your gullet from the stomach. Barrett's esophagus is the end stage of this reflux and is almost always preceded by all the symptoms of reflux. And this can be you know, heartburn, uh, an acidic sensation in the stomach and so forth. So Barrett's esophagus by itself does not have any symptoms. And this actually makes it a very dangerous problem. It is important for the patients and the clinician treating the patient to understand that Barrett's esophagus is preceded by the typical symptoms of reflux over a long period of time. And these symptoms fail to respond to standard lines of treatment. Reflux is treated by lifestyle modification, medical management, dietary changes, etc. When your symptoms do not respond to these standard lines of treatment, it is absolutely vital that you seek the expert advice of a gastroenterologist. Barrett's esophagus, if left untreated, can lead to cancer of the gullet, which has its own symptoms, which includes difficulty in swallowing, feeling sick, vomiting of food and regurgitation of the food, unintentional weight loss, vomiting of blood, etc. So the gold standard method uh, for diagnosing Barrett's esophagus is by performing a camera investigation of your gullet. In medical terminology, it is called a gastroscopy. It is fluidly interchanged with the word endoscopy as well. It is a fiber optic examination of your gullet. The fiber optic uh, examination starts by introducing the camera to your mouth, spending some time in your gullet, having a good look. Barrett's esophagus is a change which is visible to the naked eye. We can measure the length or the distance of the Barrett's esophagus. The fiber optic test allows us to sample or take biopsies from this Barrett's segment. And depending on the changes, the treatment varies. Barrett's esophagus, as I previously mentioned, results from chronic exposure of the lower gullet to the acid from the stomach. So the trick in preventing Barrett's esophagus is to, first of all, reducing the amount of acid that your stomach produces, and secondly, reducing the amount of acid that is coming up into your gullet using different strategies. When it comes to reducing the amount of acid that you're producing in your stomach, it is usually by dietary methods. So rather than focusing on foods and drinks as such, we need to think about are we eating regular meals? Are we splitting up the meals, for example, say six small portions rather than three set meals? Thinking about what goes into your food. So it is important to think about the caloric content, the fat content, both of which increases your acid production. When it comes to individual foods, there are fruits like citric fruits, satsumas, oranges, clementines. They make you produce more acid than the others. And for some reason, bananas too. When it comes to vegetables, anything that's in your salad, your cucumber, your onion, your garlic, um, this, this dressing that you put on your salad and tomatoes, uh, which is a notorious uh, ingredient which increases your acid production. Too much coffee, too much tea, fizzy pop, like Coke and Pepsi, and obviously alcohol uh, in excess. All of this contributes to increased acid production. So if we can keep a control on all of this, it will reduce your reflux and thereby the risk of progressing to paralysis of this. Once we take utmost precaution and education in uh, reducing the chance of developing paralysis of this, if we do develop Barrett's esophagus and that has been formally diagnosed, the treatment is twofold. One is taking measures to reducing the Barrett's from progressing any further. And the second is monitoring the Barrett's at regular intervals. So how do we reduce the chance of it from progressing further? 
that is simply by reducing further injury from the asset. And lifestyle modification, as I've already mentioned, is key to this. But beyond that, we also have tablets or medications which can stop your stomach from producing acid. If these medications are simply called proton pump inhibitors, there are three or four in the market and all of them do an equally good job. And it is important that you stay on at least one of them on a long-term basis. The second is once your virus has been identified, you will need regular endoscopies to keep an eye on them, take samples and look under the microscope. The British Society of Gastroenterology and the American Association have come with a unified uh, guideline for this. And uh, based on that guideline, you will need a repeat camera test once every three years or once every year or six months or so. Uh, if required, we will also discuss these findings with the upper GI surgeons in a tertiary center. And if needed, a referral to them with specialized endoscopic techniques will help in keeping the virus under check. 